So this is my delicious homemade sourdough bread recipe. This is a beginner's recipe, so I try to keep it as simple as possible, but hopefully you guys can tell from the video, it will be delicious, and honestly, this will impress all of your family and friends if you decide to share some with them. So let's get right into this delicious sourdough bread recipe. So as you guys can see, I have my starter here. This is Romeo, I've named it Romeo, and it is my homemade starter. There are a lot of videos on how you can make your own starter or maybe you'll be gifted a starter. So that is just a side note, but hopefully you guys have a starter that is ready to go. And as you guys can see, I have four cups of water. It is a lukewarm water, so four cups of that. And then I have about 200 grams of starter ready to go into the bowl with the water. And this is starter that was fed the night before. So this is about eight to 12 hours after feeding. So it is perfectly ready to be used for sourdough bread. So as you guys can see, I'm just scraping the bowl and getting every last little bit of that starter. And I'm just mixing it into that water. And hopefully you guys can tell, but it does kind of float to the top. So that is when you know that it is ready to use. It is nice and activated and I'm just giving it a good mix and incorporating that into the water. Then I have two cups of whole wheat flour. I like to add some whole wheat flour into the sourdough. It just gives it more of a wholesome taste and I just like that little bit of whole wheat flour. And then I have two cups of regular white unbleached flour. You can use all-purpose flour or bread flour. Usually bread flour works a little bit better, but you could use both if you don't have bread flour on hand. Then I'm adding another two cups of the regular bread flour or all-purpose white flour. So I'm just incorporating two cups at a time. Then I'm going in with another two cups of the white flour and I'm just mixing as we go. As you can see now, I'm using my hands and we're just getting right in there. We want to incorporate everything. So I'm taking everything out of the bowl and we're going to knead that onto the table. So I find that, especially when you're starting out, I like to have a little bit more of a drier consistency for the dough. So that will just help everything rise a little bit better. And it's a little bit more foolproof in my opinion. So normally sourdough is very sticky, but I've added a little bit more flour, which I honestly think is super foolproof. So you want to have a little bit of a thicker consistency for the dough and you guys will see that you will it will yield amazing bread every single time so once you get a little bit more confident you can go with a little bit less flour if you guys like but honestly guys this recipe is amazing so as you guys can see i'm doing the slap and fold technique and now everything is mixed beautifully and there's no more clumps or lumps and it's a beautiful soft dough so that I took about seven minutes to mix that. I use the slap and fold technique. I'm going to just cover that up with a dish rag and then let that sit for one hour. Now I'm putting two tablespoons of water and one tablespoon of salt onto that nice, nicely rested dough. Then I'm going to slowly start incorporating that all together. You really want to make sure that the salt is fully absorbed into the dough and there's no salty clumps. So this will just take a little bit of time. So I'm using that slap and fold technique again, as you guys can see, and I'm really, really making sure that that salt is absorbed into the dough and everything is incorporated seamlessly. This should probably take you about five minutes in total. Then I'm gonna be putting it back into the bowl to let it rest for another hour. Now I have a nice bowl of water next to me here, and this is the stretching phase here. So you wanna make sure that you do eight even stretches on each corner, so in fours. This is just gonna really make sure that we're getting all that gluten into the dough and that'll just help the rise and everything. So these folds are very important for the sourdough. So I'm doing eight folds, four on each side. So 
So then I'm gonna flip the dough over and let it rest for another 30 minutes now. And then we're gonna do some more, eight more stretch and folds. And every time you do it, you can see that the dough is getting a little bit more elasticized and it's just becoming stronger and the gluten is forming beautifully at this point. So in another 30 minutes later, we're going to do our last set of stretches. And then another 30 minutes later, we are ready to pre-shape. I like to use a scale to measure out the dough equally. So I'm just weighing it all and then I'm going to divide that in twos or in three, depending how big or how small you want your loaves to be. So I'm just doing two even loaves. Of course, you can cut it by eye, but I like to really make sure that it's measured correctly. So I'm just separating them into two even doughs. So once your dough is separated into how many little loaves that you think you want. I'm going to make sure that I pre-shape them into round balls. I'm just using the bench scraper here to help me shape the dough into balls. As you guys can see, I'm using the friction of my table and it's just creating really nice, even rounded loaves here. You don't, you wanna make sure that you don't do it too tightly because the top of it could kind of crack. So then once we have them pre-shaped into their little balls here, we're gonna leave them for 20 minutes. And then I have some gluten-free flour here, which is really good for putting into the banneton because it does not make the dough ball stick as much as regular flour. So that's just a little trick. I like to use gluten-free flour for that. The dough will just pop right out really easily. So 20 minutes later, I have my bannetons ready to go. They are all floured up. And now we can start the shaping of our loaves. So I'm taking that little ball there and flipping it over onto itself and I'm doing one fold towards myself and then folding each side into one another. And I'm kind of tucking in that last little end there and this is really strengthening everything up, all the gluten, and it'll just rise more beautifully this way because we are shaping it. And then I'm tucking in each corner there, as you guys can see, almost like cinching it together. So I'm really making sure that I squeeze that dough together. And then now I'm doing that one last fold into it so I'm kind of making like a little ball there as you guys can see tucking everything in and then I'm flipping that over and you want to make sure that the nice seamless soft part is at the bottom there and then the open part is on the top so I'm doing the same thing the exact same thing with the other one so this is the pre-shape then I'm going to be doing one last little cinch here just to make sure everything is tightly together and we have some nice even little lobes there. So I'm just cinching all those ends together and making sure that the balls are nice and tightly woven together. So it should look something like that. And then I'm going to cover it. I just have this little banneton cover here. And I'm just, you could use anything for that. I'm just using that to cover it. And then I'm gonna be putting that into the fridge overnight to rest and it'll slowly be proofing all overnight. So then the next morning I have my Dutch oven here. This is a large little Dutch oven. And I'm going to put it into the oven and I'm setting the temperature to 480 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to preheat that Dutch oven into the oven for about an hour. So it's going to be heating up for an hour. You want it to be really, really hot, scalding hot. So that's very important. And now I'm taking the dough out of the fridge. This is directly from the fridge. And then I'm just going to wipe away any of that excess flour there. 
and I also put that dough onto a parchment paper so it's just going to be easier to put into the Dutch oven. And I'm going to be creating a little bit of a fancy design here. You guys obviously don't have to, but I have that little carving knife there and you could use any knife, but you want it to be sharp. You can buy this on Amazon. I will link it in the description box as well as my Dutch oven. I got them all from Amazon. And as you guys can see, it's pretty simple to create those little wheat patterns. I'm just doing quick little motions and and you guys can see it just creates like that wheat pattern and then a quick line in the middle you want to make sure that your cuts are even and quick and very confident because it'll make for a nice rise you'll get that really nice ear that looks beautiful for sourdough breads so now i'm putting it into the oven And I also put a pan underneath to make sure that the bottom doesn't burn. You want to make sure you're putting the bread into the Dutch oven with the lid on top for 20 minutes. And then 20 minutes later, you're going to remove the lid and make sure that it gets nice and crusty for another 30 to 35 minutes, depending on how big your bread is. Mine was pretty, pretty big. I did it for 35 minutes. And as you guys can see, it rose beautifully. It's perfectly brown and toasty, and it just looks beautiful. As you guys can see, there's an ear there, and there's the nice pattern of the little wheat pattern that we did. And it was super simple, so you wanna make sure that you let it rest. So about an hour later, you can finally cut into it, and you will get the most delicious sourdough loaf. As you guys can see, all the beautiful bubbles and the rising. It's just honestly the most amazing bread you guys will ever taste and it's so worth it. You can see how fluffy and beautiful it is. It has the perfect coloration. It is crunchy on the outside and soft and moist on the inside. You want to make sure you have a good serrated knife to cut into it and some delicious butter. Of course that's optional. You can use butter or olive oil. I'm even putting some Maldon salt there, so it is just like a flaky salt. It is so nice and enjoy, guys. That is the beginner's guide to sourdough bread loaves, and this recipe has been foolproof. I've been using it for quite a while now, and it is amazing. Everyone loves my sourdough bread, so I hope you guys can make it yourselves and share it with your loved ones. Enjoy it yourself and just indulge in this delicious healthier type of bread and you will be so proud of yourselves because there's just something about making a homemade loaf of sourdough that is just so amazing so i hope you guys enjoy thank you guys for watching this video and i'll see you in my next one bye